Hello everybody, I'm Kogi Fox. We're gonna do a little bit of a, a carjack uh, for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk tutorial here. Uh, ba basically, my process for getting cars into Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, right? Like, that's what carjack is. You drive drive car, go vroom. So, like, all right, you wanna make a car for Bomb Rush, you need to have a car pack. So, starting off, when you import your carjack Unity project, you're gonna have not all this crap here, because I've put a lot of crap here, but you're going to have some basic folders and some basic stuff. We're going to go into the prefabs folder. We're going to have some basic cars in here that are going to be just the default of the car jack pack. For example, the blue car. Everyone knows the blue car from Bomber Cyberfunk. Well, if we look at the blue car, down here at the asset bundle, it has it's under the car jack asset bundle. Now, we want to make our own asset bundle. That's first that's the first step here is making our own asset bundle. Our own asset bundle is going to be essentially what differentiates it from every other, you know, carjack car in the game. Uh, it's going to be your own little category of vehicles, essentially. So, prime example would be my Civic here. It's under Jinsoku Motors car bundle. So, when you make a new uh, asset bundle, you're going to want to name it to whatever. Uh, you can name it like uh, Butthole Motors. Dot car bundle. Now you always want to put dot car bundle at the end, so when you build your actual mod, it'll automatically put the extension at the end, and you don't have to go renaming any files. But Jinsoku Motors is ours. So what do we do now that we have our car bundle? Well, now the easiest way to start would be by you know prefabbing one of the cars that already exists. So I'm going to press Control D on the blue car to create a copy of it. We're just going to name it as Test Car 1. Test Car 1 is going to be our test car. We double click on our prefab and we enter our prefab for our test car. Here's everything our test car should have. So realistically, the easiest way to import a car would to just be replace the mesh for this. But before we do that, we do need to change its unique identifier and its internal name. So this right here is pretty important. What you want to do is you want to name it to something that is uniquely identifiable. Uh, no spaces, however. So since I named the car Test Car 1, we'll just do Test Car 1. And that is the unique identifier for this vehicle. Now, moving on from there, in our hierarchy, we have our blue car. This is the model right here. Realistically, we're gonna delete that. However, we wanna drop our new car into the scene first. So I'm gonna Go pick a car I've already imported in Unity. That part is really easy. I'm not going to show you how to import assets in the Unity. It's dragging and dropping. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take our Subaru here. So we have the Subaru Legacy. It's missing some textures, but that's fine. We don't care. We're going to drag it right into our hierarchy. We're going to try to scale it to at least somewhat match the scale of the car we're replacing, just because scaling is always the worst part. And then once we do that, we delete the old car first part of the process is already done. We have a model in the scene. At this point, you know, you can go ahead and material your mod model, texture it, uh, what have you. We're not going to go into that right now. But what we are going to do is we're going to swap out these wheel models. This wheel model ain't very good. So, easiest way, at least I've found, I'm going to take this wheel right here. We're going to drop this wheel right onto each of the categories. And then once we do that, that's when we can now start positioning and scaling. So I'm just going to select all the wheels at once. I'm going to go from global to local. I don't know why that's not showing, but if you click this button right here, it'll say global or local. Hit local right here. And that will allow you to scale each wheel on its own individual axis, making it a lot easier to scale. So we're just going to scale the wheels a little bit. Then I'm going to delete the old wheels. Bam. We now have wheels on our car. But now they're not aligned. So to align our wheels, you don't want to align this model right here. This should always be 0, 0, 0. You want to align the actual parent in the hierarchy. So to make this easier, I'm going to select both the front wheels. I'm going to move them forward. Just line them up with the body. And then, from here, I'm going to give it a top-down view. 
I'm going to select each side. I'm just going to move those in. Just kind of line everything up. All nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and lined up. Now, our big problem is these wheels are backwards. What are we going to do about that? Well, that's an easy fix. Up here in the scale, just take your X scale and add a negative. That's all you do. Just add a negative right in front of that number. And your wheel's the right angle. Now, your wheels will work, but they're not proper yet. If we click on the wheel FR, which is uh, the first one for the front right, we're going to notice its mesh in the, visu in the visuals are missing. We're going to have to drag our new wheel mesh into that for each wheel. And make sure it's going to be the right one for each wheel, else you're going to have some funny issues. And then, before we forget, we need to give our actual body of the car itself a collision. So that way, you know, things don't get weird. We add a component. We add a mesh collider. Now this part's really important. You want to set it to convex. If your mesh collider is not set to convex, this is not going to work. You also want to click on material and set the material to car physics. A window will pop up. It's not showing up here, but it will say car physics. There's going to be car physics and chopper physics. Just pick car physics if you're making a, a land vehicle. Last step to this to make this work at a basic level is to change the layer for your main vehicle mesh to be enemies. It's not showing here because, you know, but um, you click on the layer and uh, there'll be a big list of, of layers here, It'll be about 31. Just look for enemies, which should be, it's number 17 for me, but it might be different for you. Uh, just make sure your vehicle is tagged as enemies. There's going to be a window that pops up that says, do you want to set layer to enemies for all child objects as well? You hit yes, and then the layer up here should now say enemies. It should say this for every single part of your car. You're also going to want to do this for your wheels as well, just for good measure. And once you do that, the car is now at a base level drivable. So in our test scene here, let me just find test car one. I'm going to drag test car one out into our scene. I'm going to go into our car tester. We're going to drag it into the car tester, and we're going to hit play. The wheels are the wrong way, but that's an easy fix. But at a very base level, your car is now working. There's no collision issues. The wheels are spinning. They're the wrong way, but they're spinning. Now to fix the wheels being the wrong way, they're essentially just rotated the wrong way. So I'm just going to set the rotation of these to 180 for both sides, or just zero. Make sure your rotations are also just zero for your wheels. If they're not zeroed out, it's going to look weird. So we're going to set these to negative. And these to positive. Now the wheels should be proper in our test scene. That's one debug right there. And there you go. There's your basic test vehicle for Armrush Cyberfunk. At this point, what you would do, if you want to export it to the game, so what you want to do typically is go up to Carjack and hit Build Asset Bundle. However, before I do that, I made an oopsie whoopsie and I didn't change the Asset Bundle pack that I created at the beginning. So I'm going to click on it. We're going to set it to Jinsoku Motors. And now we have our proper car bundle. So by hitting Build Asset, Now it'll build, it'll bring up our build menu. So here's our build folder. This is where your car jack bundle is going to be built. I'm going to take my Jinsoku Motors our car bundle, and then we're going to go to our Bepinex plugins. Now you can just drop your car bundle straight here into the Bepinex plugins for testing, and then from there you're pretty much good to go in game. But now we're going to go a little bit into more detail as far as how to refine and make your car a little bit better. We want to have audio, right? Audio, everyone loves audio. Engine audio. It's as simple as a sound loop, right? Got a bunch of different sounds here that I've imported. Find some engine sounds you like, find some that work with the vehicle, find some that sound cool, find some that are funny. We'll just uh, set that one, horn audio. Why not? Tire audio. 
sure we'll change that one up too. Another thing here. So moving on from car audio, because it's very simple. We have this big yellow box. What is this big yellow box? This is your passenger seat. It's how people sit in your car. Now considering this car is uh, right-hand drive, we're going to have to move this to the other side. Now, this part can take trial and error and may need testing in-game to get it perfectly lined up. Um, have a friend help you out, because it can get kind of frustrating. Uh, but we then go into our... we take our trigger here, we move that out. The trigger is what allows people to essentially interact with the vehicle and then sit in it in-game. Um, to add more, you can just duplicate, duplicate the entire thing. Move it back, give it seat index 1. Do it again for this side. Move the trigger. Seat index 2, 1, 0, and then we should have a driver's seat somewhere. Ah, there's no driver's seat on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an empty. I'm going to call it driver. And add the car driver seat script to it. Uh, we'll give it the stadium controller because the stadium car is the one that has the animations and lets you see your character in it. And then we'll just kind of drag that into place. I don't want it low so your character doesn't want to sit too high. This part really, really comes a lot of trial and error to get proper. But once you do, it's it's worth it in the end. But yeah, that that's the general basics to car jack um tuning i'll most likely make a another video on at some point. suspension tuning is going to be a big focal point of the next video but yeah at this point you should have a decent understanding on how to get a vehicle into bomb rush cyberpunk using car jack it's not too hard i may have fumbled and tripped here here and there but yeah no realistically i i believe i have faith in you go out there and put cars into a game that was never meant to have them in the first place. Okay, bye.